Bidayo may be the first tribe to come to Sarawak around 1380 from Kalimantan in South Borneo, which is now part of Indonesia. Predominantly Bidayo areas in Sarawak are Lundu, Bau, Penrisen, Padawan, Siburan, and Serian. Most of the Bidayo villages can be found in the rural areas of Lundu, Bau, Padawan, Penrisen, and Serian district. There are approximately 25 dialects of Bidayo spoken in Sarawak. The uh, Bidayo, we, we have a common ancestry, common origin, and there are many theories about our origin. But the old theory seem to zero in on our original place, how we you know, were found in Sung Kong. So from Sung Kong, they around we move, migrate to Sarawak side. During the time, probably Sarawak was not recognized as Sarawak. It was Brunei, Brunei territory. And uh, reasons for the uh, migration, we, you know, we look back at history, they were the push factor, the push, you know, the, during the heyday of the Majapahit Empire, the Bidayo were being squeezed out into the interior. But we are actually originally from Indonesia. The mound or from Sungko, Indonesia, or that is our origin. And um, <clears throat> you're talking about where, how we spread out. Saying that uh, the Bidayo from Sarawak actually coming from Sungkong, Indonesia. And uh, we, we, with that region, uh, we settle in many parts of uh, the area, the region which is now the Syrian, the Bau, the Pendesen, the Padawan. We spread out. So uh, that is what we call the earlier settlement of the Bidayo people and we spread out to Penisen, Padawan, uh, Bau, Lundu, Syrian and uh, up to every part of the Bidayo as we are today. Bidayo what does it actually refers to? B means manusia. Daya means land. So we actually are people of the land. And we believe to be originating from Sungkong, Kalimantan. Bidaya, as we all know, is found everywhere in all the uh, districts within the Kuching and Samarhan Division, Kuching and Syrian Division. And um, as far as Bukal Saduk itself, we actually, uh, in the past, there were three main settlements of the Bidayo in the Bukar Sadung, uh, in, uh, in Bukar Sadung district. And the Bukar means we, the earlier generation or the earlier settlement is by far actually at the uh, Bung Sadung. Uh, and then um, the earlier part or the earlier uh, settlement of the Sadung area are found at the Mingarat, found at the uh, Mongkos area. Bukan Sadung actually having a lot of settlements throughout, spreading out throughout Syria. Syrian division gazetted there are 144 Bukar Sadung villages here. Yeah? And then out of this, if we break it again, there are 40, 44 Bukar villages and the rest of course Sadong villages. So meaning that Sadong has more villages than the Bukar. Lah. Yeah. But then we look at the villages, the Bukar have many big, big, uh, what call it? Big villages, they mean many houses. Yeah, many houses, say in Ta'i, for example, it has almost 500, 500 houses. 
something like that. The bidaya that are found in the area that you mentioned, Penrisen, Seburan and Pedawan, they came from Kalimantan and they moved to an area in Upper Pedawan and Penrisen to a place called Rabak Mukabuk. Rabak in Bidayur mean a flat area. They were moving to look for uh, a suitable land where they can settle and also do farming. And from there, they moved to all the other areas. Lah. Like uh, from Rabak Makabu is in uh, Penderson. Those days, there were no road. They were just jungle track and so on. So they moved to um, Suburan. Uh, they moved to the Bukuru area huh? and all the surrounding areas within uh, the vicinity of the Rabak Makabu. Huh? Mm. The Padawan Penderson the Padawan Peninsula, the early part of the Padawan Peninsula, actually, uh, in uh, the old history or in the legend of uh, Bidayur history, uh, Padawan itself is actually all are called the Biata, Biata Daya, and uh, they open up the settlement originally uh, as stated or as being uh, found to be uh, in the legend of the Bede history, Rabak, Rabak Mekabe, Rabak Mekabe. And then they moved to Bung Minangis, where they live in Darul Santah, that is Nabi Paro, Siburan Asan, Tekuk Stang, Seguk Benak, the Tebia, then we have the Braang, the Bena, and then Pinyawa, then Bengoh Danu, and the Bisapuk. They are all considered Biata, the general, the general, uh, the general term of it. They are all Biata. Uh, based on history, I think that I, I mean most history books they say that this, uh, and I believe also that the first Bidayo, the, uh, the origin is coming from Sungkong, West Kalimantan, from Indonesia, and then they are said to have settled in Sarawak for about 800 or even 1,000 years already in Sarawak. The first place they come is uh, Rabak Mekabu in uh, Padawan. They settled there for generations after population multiply, short taste of land, click among the people, each group they start to move out. So one group is uh, they call they say this the Serembu, that is about uh, believed to be 200 or 300 100 years ago before the coming of the James Brook to Sarawak. So that means they have settled here, the site, the very site we are here now. They, uh, they form three longhouses, namely the Bumbok longhouse, the Serembu longhouse, and then the Peninyao longhouse. So today there are 18 kampongs. The fathers of all originally from Peninyao at Bumuan here is, uh, you can see at the Sumaba, the Matu, the Bumbok, uh, those people. So part of the Bidago ancestry or the Bidago from Bau originated from Sungkong and they moved through a few pit stops, a few you know places in within Kalimantan area before they arrive at uh, you know at Labak Makabu, Rabak Makabu. Huh? From there they spread out within the population, they moved to Bau side, but before that they moved through Labak Jambos at Krokong and then move slightly westward toward Gumbang. From Gumbang, most of the Bidayu, you know, sub tribe, you know, you know, arrive from Gumbang side. You know, the Serembu, the Broi, the Jagoi, the Singai, the Singai has, has arrived earlier, you know, uh, or rather parallel, you know, the migration route. Yeah, Ludu will be. Ludu will be more interesting uh, to describe because Lundu actually uh, they are known as Selakau and Rara and this group of people are actually uh, quite different from us in terms of dialects, culture and custom. But uh, yeah, they all originated originated from uh, uh, 
on Kalimantan, on the, on the early part. But around 1970s, for some unifying reason, they begin to realize that they cannot be selako rara by themselves. So they want to be part of the BDU uh, community or part of the big family. And uh, that makes BDU people I carry very colorful. History tells you the story of how your nation, city or community came to be everything that it is. It tells you where your ancestors came from and tells you who they were. episode uh, was very unfortunate. It was the darkest history in the uh, annals of the history of Bidayo. No, the whole village, the whole longhouses made up comprises, comprised of few longhouses were ravaged, were burned to the ground by hordes of uh, you know, pirates and headhunters from Skrang area. Now, uh, from the uh, Fox Law, okay, like the Jagoi Bratak uh, arrive in 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 Bau, okay, in Bung Bratak at that time way back about a thousand years ago, between eight to one thousand years ago. The Jagoi Bratak from Sungkung, when they move up, they look for good land to plant paddy. When, when they moved to Bumratak, down at the, at the foothill, the land is fertile. You see? So they settled at Bumratak. Uh, during that time, uh, seven, eight hundred years ago, they settled there and start to build their community. When you have a lot of uh, food, that is when your enemy will look up on that particular place. They know that there is food there. Whether you like it or not, they know that mountain has lots of food. So the only way is to attack them so that we can take the food. Okay? And rice is the food that they are aiming. And uh, the uh, boom at that time, when they leave uh, on that hill, many times, the place being uh, being tried by by the enemy to attack they attack them because of this but they fell many many times they attack but they fell because they are well defended right and uh, at that time there's uh, the, the panglima or the warriors uh, is around so the first attack the first attack by the balao tribe from the sub ethnic from skrang the, it was abortive, right? They, they were defeated, they were chased away, and you know, the 150 uh, of them were captured by the Bissau or the South people, the Bumbratak people. So maybe after one year or two years, you know, those tribe again thought that, you know, they want to, you know, they thought that the South or the Bawang South uh, one must pay a price for that. So they organized another big attack led by by this Iban warrior by the name of Gasing, Bulang, Tadong, you know, and with the help of uh, some chief, the river Rhine chief, the Malays, huh? they provide them with guns and sort of, you know, arrangement that, uh, you know, whatever was being captured, huh? may be shared. Now, the fateful uh, day when Bumratak was um, uh, toppled and burned down. It was uh, recorded sometime in May, most likely on the 1st of May in 1838. At that time, the community, they worked down at the farm to carry the paddy, you know, that uh, the month of May is the month whereby the community uh, bringing the harvest, you know, back to the village, you see? So meaning uh, you need strong men, yeah, 
to go carry all those pedi. You need strong men, you need young men and young women uh, to go to the farm and start transporting all this pedi to Bumrata. And during this period of time, those that stay behind are the elders, the, the, the sick, all right, children. They are the one who left behind. Okay, when all those are uh, everybody uh, community of the village start going down there to the farm and start carrying that stuff up, an attack being done. So of course, when the attack came, when the attack will launch, the defenders were not ready. Also, during the time, most of the men, the able-bodied men, were in the field tending to their farm and many more were on war party to Samba's territory. So I left a few people, they were overpowered because of the yeah, numerical superiority of the attackers. So the boom track talk, one of us were overpowered, you know, the, the men was you know, murdered, were killed. You know, the fruit trees ravaged, the granaries where they kept the rice you know, were burned down for three days and three nights. The granaries, the rice, the rice buns, you know, the granaries were burned. The fruit trees were cut down. The women and the small children were being carried away as captives by the uh, victorious pirates. So it was the darkest history. And then it was not until James Brook came to Sarawak five years or six years later that they were able to trace back and brought some of these uh, surviving uh, uh, inhabitants of Bumbratak to back to, to, to Bau. But James Brook do not want to have this uh, uh, war with other community. You know, when you are skinny, you, you do not want to make enemy more uh, when you can make friend. You see? So he don't mind sending, but not with the army, not with his soldier. So meaning uh, the Bratak people when in 19, uh, in 1841, right, using the schooner with Kulo and the and the member, they went to Skrang and managed to bring the community back. But fortunately, the elders at Skrang Day, they received them peacefully and they sit down and talk. And that is how they managed to bring all of them back. Okay, that is why uh, we are called uh, the Sao. Tebawang Sao, we call it. Uh. Tebawang is a uh, former place of the community. Sao means burn. Right? And the English call us the Sao tribe. You know, that is a uh, Bumbrata. When we appreciate history, we appreciate the sacrifices and hard work of those who came before us. All of those things are concepts we can relate to. History isn't about dates, names and events. History is about people. And history's people tells you the story of how your nation, city or community came to be everything that it is. Uh, in the early days, the uh, Bedayu like uh, what was uh, mentioned in the English journal, right, uh, by James Brook. The Bedayu are humble, hardworking, okay, and obedient. You see, this is the characteristic uh, uh, of the Bedayu, right, that was uh, mentioned or written by the English during that time. Okay, and the Bidayu also uh, do not practice head hunting in the early days, you know. They never practice head hunting. It is not in the Bidayu uh, culture, he uh, head hunting. But when revenge, you know, revenge come, that is when, you know, we will do the same thing what you did to us. 
You see, that is where yeah, the, the, uh, the, a lot of perception about the Bidayu, they said uh, they are headhunter. Right? The, he the Bidayu headhunter because other people do the same. They will hunt them. Right? Uh, we are even more fierce. Okay, when we do it. So headhunting the Bidayu were not really the aggressor, you know. They, you, you, you come to my place, you intrude, you disturb me. Of course, I have to act. I have to act violently. Hmm? You want my head over my dead body. So, so the Bidayu, yeah, or the reprisal, they, they, they attack the intruder. Yeah? And because of, it's not much on spiritual kind of thing even the spiritual aspect they, they, they have to consider but uh, it's a community a communal kind of you know, undertaking so the Bidayu you know version of headhunting is more or less defense act of defense and also reprisal and uh, partly cultural you know, because uh, yeah because that was a trend during those days Bidayu only engage in headhunting as a form of defense against attackers and also in reprisal. However, there is one particular tribe that excel in headhunting. Because of headhunting, most Bidayu settle in the top of the mountain for them to easily to protect themselves, to defend themselves. So for the Bisingai, we stay at the mountain Singai. And there's only one way to go up there, and they have a fort, kind of fort there, so they always uh, can, can guard the fort. Huh? So one way is to throw the spear against them, two is to roll the, the rock <laughs> to, to hit the enemy down there. So uh, that's why. And then also when they attack them, they are very good in Puntao uh, and fighting spirit line. And some of them, uh, they can even, our hero can be even disappear, you know. I think they disappear like Indonesian uh, hero can go to the city. Uh. So that's how it's hunting us and the defense of them. And these things are quite an aggressive people. So that's why they can conquer the other enemies and can catch a lot of uh, skull. I remember when they stopped uh, the Gawai of the, this thing, so all the skull was just strewn around. Until my lecturer say, can I take one? Okay, take one because nobody wanted. So many, you know? So that's what the Singai is. Lah. Our history allows us to take a step back and recognize that some of what we take for granted is remarkable and that some of what we have thought immutable and natural to the Bidayo today. Most importantly of all, it gives you the ability to spot and appreciate the legacies you may have inherited from them.